SpaceX is scheduled to launch its Crew-3 mission on October 30th, 2021. Our interview with pilot Dr. Thomas Marshburn is up next. Three, two, one. Welcome to Your Space Journey, where we venture into the future of space exploration. Your journey begins now. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm thrilled to introduce my special guest, Dr. Thomas Marshburn. Thomas, the pilot of the Crew Dragon spacecraft and second in command for the SpaceX Crew-3 mission, scheduled to launch at the end of this month. Thomas is responsible for spacecraft systems and performance. Once aboard the International Space Station, he will serve as an Expedition 66 flight engineer. Tom is a Statesville, North Carolina native who became an astronaut in 2004. Prior to serving in the astronaut corps, Tom was a medical doctor and served as a flight surgeon for NASA and then later became medical operations lead for the ISS. The Crew-3 mission will be his third visit to the space station and his second long-duration mission. Your Space Journey. Hello, Chuck. Hello, Tom. How are you, sir? Good. How are you doing? Nice pictures behind you there. Well, thank you. Yes, I hope to have another one of your mission coming up here. Uh, there we'll, we'll try to <laughs> supply you with some. Yeah. That'll be awesome. Hey, Tom, I just want to ask you, you've flown on the shuttle, you've flown on Soyuz, and now you're getting ready to pilot Crew Dragon. Uh, what are you most excited about? Oh, I can't wait to see what it's like, you know, I mean, uh, especially comparing it to the other other rockets. I'm sure some has got to be the same, you know, the, the pressure in your chest of the four plus G's as you get, get up there. But staging in particular will be interesting. That's so uniquely different between uh, vehicles. Can't wait to see what the staging is like and how we experience that. Everything, the sounds, the vibrations, the the bangs, if there are any, the jolts. Can't wait. It's going to be that's going to be so neat to see your perspective on that. Now, I also think it's cool too. You you've witnessed some pretty incredible traditions. Uh, you know, the space shuttle had some. Uh, Soyuz, you know, get slapped in the, in the face by a priest. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and then here comes Crew Dragon. Um, are there any special traditions that you're that are you're looking forward to for Crew Dragon, or any special ones that you like to that you kind of like the most of all you've seen so far? We're um... We're building those traditions, I think. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're starting them out. And so if somebody did it before, this is not yet our tradition. Um, there hasn't really uh, been anything to date yet. I mean, of course, we do have the zero G indicator. Uh, yeah. You'll see what that is when we hit zero G. Can't wait. And so SpaceX has uh, you know, allowed us to uh, put that together. Um, and so that's probably the only thing right now. There is some leftovers from the shuttle era. Uh, which we may implement. You know, there's a, a game that the crew plays in their suits while they're getting ready to go out the launch pad. Can't go out until the crew wins the game. Uh, it used to be a card game from Shuttle. I don't know what it's going to be or for sure if we're going to do it uh, with SpaceX. Uh, so we'll work with them. We'll develop some some traditions. There's also when we get the crew patch on a sticker, places that we can leave the sticker for people to, to see or to sign. And so very nice. There's that as well. Yeah. Oh, that sounds great. Now you some, have some pretty neat science experiments coming up in this mission too. I right. think you have a muscle um, uh, sensor that's going to test for uh, atrophy uh, muscles in space. Can you tell us right. more about, about that experiment? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. So in a lot of ways, <clears throat> it's very fascinating. You know, typically to understand how a muscle works, to really understand, it, you got to get a muscle biopsy. That is <clears throat> incredibly invasive. I mean, you're basically stabbing somebody. And so this is a way to learn all about the muscle uh, with just a light touch. It's a sensor that is actually exquisitely sensitive to picking up uh, the tensile strength of the muscle, the vibration, how it reacts to a, a very tiny signal that it puts in through there. So very uh, non-invasive to do it. So it's, it's two things. It's learning about the muscles in space. As you know, they atrophy. Uh, we try to keep them recovered with all the exercise we do. We are uh, guinea pigs in a broad experiment that's looking at accelerated aging in space and see how that applies to uh, aging on the ground uh, and ways to mitigate it. But also as, tech, as a technology demonstration, this is a unique way to take a technology, apply it to a unique area, see how it performs, and uh, you know maybe even accelerate the, the technology itself, which will help people uh, that otherwise have to get muscle biopsies you know, on the ground. So, well, that would be exciting. incredible. 
You also have some other experiments coming out. I think there's a cold atom experiment uh, yeah. and some others. Any others that you could just tell us a bit more, more about? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, you know, uh, cold atom is one of those things that we tend. We don't, we're not there uh, during the operation. That would, by itself is incredibly exciting, you know, recreating uh, the coldest place in the universe at, at an atomic level understanding. And as it turns out, being in a, uh, a place on the space station where you don't feel the effects of gravity, turns out that's one way to help you get there. So you can understand how a, a, an atom acts right at the edge of the quantum, um, the quantum arena in the macro world, something we, we don't completely understand, which I, I never would have thought that gravity would play a part of that, but it does. Right. Um, I'm looking forward to, uh, boy, a lot of the uh, uh, fluid physics experiments that we do, not only do you have zero G, but you can now contain uh, a fluid um, or a semi-solid in a magnetic field so it doesn't touch the touch the uh, boundaries of the container. Wow. And so now you can do all these incredible things like <clears throat> understand fluid flow. If there's a temperature difference, how does it flow inside of a sphere in and out into the center and back out again? You're not only learning about how <clears throat> liquids become solids and how you can make more perfect solids, uh, but you're also learning about the physics and engineering equations and saying, yeah, we, we either got it right or we need to modify them. But it even applies on the macro level. How does the Earth's mantle work um, and that, that fluid core? We can understand so much more about how these things work in a perfect sphere, which you simply cannot recreate uh, when you experience the gravity field here on Earth. Wow. And there's so much to learn. Now, Tom, I think this is incredible. You're no stranger to emergencies. Uh, you've worked in emergency physician, yeah. uh, flight surgeon. Uh, after becoming an astronaut, you had to conduct an emergency spacewalk with Chris Cassidy. Um, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about that experience? Oh, it was, uh, for us, it was a real gift at the time. Uh, we were looking out the window and saw ammonia, the coolant on the outside of the space station, because it's a big power station. Mm -hmm. If you lose your coolant, you lose your power eventually. We saw it spewing out into space, didn't know what it was, called the ground, and they said, yep, we, we see this too. We were about to undock and, and leave the space station. I was about to, because my time was up. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, it's not going to be me that goes out and fixes it, because I'm getting ready to leave. <clears throat> but indeed, they assigned Chris and myself, um, went out the hatch in 36 hours, still the fastest time from, from problem to going out the hatch. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so we just had our wits and a wonderful instruction from the ground when we went, went out there. So um, we were very excited to suddenly be in this spectacular place, crawling on the outside of your living quarters uh, where we had lived for six months and, uh, you know, heart pounding, just uh, thrilled to be there, but uh, uh, at a very serious task at hand. Five hours later, we were back in, did a repair. It turned out weeks later, they found out that that, that repair fixed it. Um, Wow. But interestingly, re-entered and about 48 hours later, I was at home taking out the trash <laughs> and looking up in space going, did that really just happen? <laughs> That'd be so surreal. I, I can't space. imagine that. Surreal is the right word, yeah. <laughs> Tom, yeah. you know, I mentioned, I, obviously, you know, you, you trained, uh, uh, you went to medical school, emergency medicine. Um, what led you into the medical field? Yeah, that's fascinating. Um. It just turned out that I, I was always attracted to uh, bioengineering. Um, don't know why, uh, but that the application to the human body, even though I was a physics major and, uh, um, and uh, an engineer, a graduate student as an engineer, partly was that I was hanging out with a lot of medical students and I felt like I had um, enjoyed the interaction with human beings and then applying science to humans uh, fascinated me. So I went into medicine yeah, uh, largely because of that. Yeah. Something interesting, and and then again, being a medical physician with a physics background, um, I, I think that's just a really neat combination. Is there anything um, with that combined background where uh, that just fascinating you about space, about what you can involve with that? Uh, boy, just about everything. The uh, mechanical differences that our bodies undergo when we hit um, zero g, we call it. There is gravity, we just don't feel it because we're in orbit. Uh, your your torso changes its shape. Your um, your heart is still working to pump blood up to your brain, which it has to do so we can stay conscious on the earth. Uh, but that means it's shoving blood up into your brain. Maybe there's an intracranial pressure problem. We don't know yet. Maybe that affects the eyes as well. There is some effect in the eyes. We don't know why. So it becomes this this uh, really fascinating pressure problem. What 
amazes me that this is um, the physics applies even on the cellular level as a cytoskeleton and a mammalian cell as we're finding out changes because it's not experiencing gravity. It's expression, it's uh, hormonal and uh, protein expression changes. Right. Um, direct relation of the mechanical change to the way physiology works. Um, there's a whole whole wide world uh, that we, we don't know. Of. We've just taken the first few steps on the beach of this whole new world. <laughs> that is so true. One thing to my kind of my last question going into it is I, I like how you kind of did this in reverse, in my opinion. You, you went on the space shuttle, I think in 2009, and then yeah. in 2010, 2010, you actually served as an aquanaut, uh, working underwater for 14 days aboard the Aquarius Underwater Laboratory. Uh, right. I was wondering, how did working underwater compare to actually working in space? I considered it the, the best analog for space flight that we have on Earth. <clears throat> we do a lot of great training. T-38s, flying jets are incredibly important for training in the facilities we have here. But being in that underwater habitat, it's, it's sort of dangerous, you know, yeah. you're living underwater. Uh, we would go out and do uh, ocean walks in, in a dive helmet. Uh, we'd practice, you know, what would it be like if suddenly your uh, helmet got, got uh, bumped and water flowed in around your head. Um, and so we'd practice that we'd actually do that 70 feet down. If we were to swim up, we'd die immediately from decompression sickness. So we, we had to stay down below. Um, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. We're doing science in an enclosed space. Uh, constantly fascinated by the world around us. So all those things came together, in my opinion, make it one of the best analogs for, for going into space for all those reasons. That's wonderful. Well, Tom, we're so excited about your mission on board Crew 3 coming up. I just want to, uh, you know, we're wishing you the best and just want to thank you so much for your time today. Really appreciate it. Oh, I appreciate that. Thanks very much. Great talking to you. Ben thank you. Thanks so much, Tom. Well, I really enjoyed my conversation with Tom today, and we're so excited about the upcoming Crew 3 mission. It's going to be exciting. If you'd like to follow along, just go to nasa.gov forward slash commercial crew. I want to thank Tom for joining us today. Uh, again, we're wishing Godspeed to him and the crew for Crew 3. I uh, want to thank him for joining us. I want to thank you for joining us today. If you can do us a favor and share this episode, we would love it. Uh, also, if you can subscribe, we'd appreciate that too. Either way, thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. God bless.